the war mightiest summoners of apply look at that best rank 7 and best rank 11 they they have probably fought one another so many many times before on the ladder as well we have a more and a carno pre-ban here for these two player once again a bruiser player without carno is like me without my i i, I have no analogy right now <laughs> It's like Sean B without a cap or something like that. And we have Shizuka first pick from Osteru here because that's the next best thing for the Karno replacement. And in response to this, we have Masu picking up two AoE buff remover and that's going to be Praha and Juno. Juno being one of the best counter to Shizuka as well. Shizuka, even though having a very terrible win rate in SWC in this group in general, Still getting favored by many, many strong players because of how versatile she is in pretty much any draft. And for the first time, we might be seeing a turn two player picking up a Jemaya and also a Thessarian to deal with the Juno. And also to take away the Thessarian from the enemy because it is one of the best units to pick against a turn two passive heavy player. We are seeing the Jamaya Shizuka combo once again. They comes together like how Mouse goes with Rakuni. And Masu is going to allow us to witness the triple Oracle gameplay with Lima and picking up the Mouse for the damage as well. He's going to do really well with multiple buff on the field and also the speed buff coming out from this Pra. So with three AoE stripper right now on Masu team, he's definitely not scared of Shizuka buff coming his way. And the... Osuru is picking up an Etna as well. His playstyle is entirely different this time compared to what we see in his profile. And the last pick will be a Dark Demon coming out from Osuru here. We have defense back set up into a Demon one shot. And the Demon is extremely effective against Masu right now because he has no cooldown reset unit, which means this Demon is gonna be a Demon in this draft because who can stop this man from killing everything on your team? So the last pick has to be some sort of a cigar, Chung Pung Gany. No, it's going to be a Raccoonie for Masu locking in the mouse Raccoonie duo as well, which means it might be a force ban on the demon, but the Jemaya is also going to be very strong if he get to move with the Ethna and the Shizuka on the team. Is it going to be a demon force ban here? Because this demon will get to roam free without any cooldown reset unit on the side of Masu. And it's going to be a Dark Demon, Beelzebub, and Lima ban here for these two players. We get we can't get to see these LD95 in action because they are really strong in this particular draft. So, if, if Osuru has the damage to bring down the Juno early, Shizuka can get to really put some heavy debuff on the side of Masu. Turn 1 will belong to the Ethna with skill 2 available and she might be even ruined on violent as well. She cannot get the full attack bar because of the two firing it on the enemy team, stopping her from critting all the way through. But the defenses will stay and that will allow the Jemaya and the Tessan to do some good damage on the enemy. More debuff on the enemy team right here. And if this Tessan land the, land the Oblivion, it's going to be very, very good for Osiru. Missed the Oblivion on the Juno. That is very, very bad because the Shizuka doesn't have the Oblivion on the enemy team as well. But she might still want to go for it because he, she needs the debuff on the Rakuni and the Juno for the follow-up damage. She is not going to do it. Going to keep her skill 3 and wasted a Violent proc that could have been amazing for her. But now she's going to go for the skill 1 potentially once again on the Rakuni gonna be on to the mouse and Rakuni could not cleanse the mouse because the HP of the mouse was not low enough but it's gonna boost the mouse and get a violent proc for himself to now bring everyone back to full HP and giving the mouse a speed buff as well. Pra gonna drop the heal trying to sleep the Shizuka but could not get it done but one thing I know for sure is that Ethna is in a lot of trouble. That is some big damage and another violent proc for the mouse as well gonna go for the stun onto the Shizuka could not get it done the Juno is gonna finish off the the Ethna and Osiru is in a lot of trouble here with down Oblivion on the field he cannot lock down this Juno and if she buff the Juno and the Pra is ready to go for the strip as well reviving the Ethna for the capture get the stun onto the Praha but it didn't really do much work on the side of Masu because he's still very very healthy and Rakuni can heal that Praha very quickly too 
He, finally, Oblivion is on the field, which means Shizuka can land that skill 3 on the Juno and Rakuni. But can she take that turn? That's going to be the biggest question here. And will she land the Oblivion onto the Rakuni and the Juno? Violent Prop for Rakuni keeping the Pra healthy and the mouse going to do a lot of damage on the enemy team as well. Juno and the mouse are both focusing onto the Jemaya because he has the one of the strongest skill 3 in the game. Everyone is focusing on this Jemaya right now. But Pra might choose a different target to crit. But no, going to focus on the Jemaya. Get a Violent Prop but could not finish off the Jemaya. And finally, the Shizuka can drop her skill 3 and the speed buff onto the Jemaya and... The Tessaran as well, he's looking to kill, but the Oblivion did not land on the Juno, which means she will be able to cleanse herself very quickly here if she doesn't get taken down from the Jemaya and the Tessarian. Quick reset for the Shizuka, but the Mao's gonna get a Violent Proc too, and there's no soul protection for this Jemaya. Gonna go for the damage on the Tessarian, and the Juno turn is ready without the Oblivion. She will cleanse herself from all the debuff. And Jemaya is gonna go down, but don't you worry because the is still gonna be here. Missed another Oblivion on this mouse. And the Tessar is gonna pay the price by being stunned up by the Juno Despair stun. Things are looking really bad for Osiru here. He's not landing the debuff that he needs. And every time he's trying to do damage, the Raccoonie and the prize here to heal up the team back to full HP. Shizuka has skill 2 available. Gonna bring back the, the Ethna, but no cooldown reduction from this revive, which means the Ethna has no skill available. And once again, this mouse getting another Violent Pro, and the Raccoon is getting the Violent Pro as well. Juno healing everyone back to full HP and get the strip on every single target on the enemy team. This is not looking good for Osiru at all. He's out of skill, out of unit, and out of this game. First game belonged to Matsu. So many turns being taken by Miles Rakuni, there was nothing they can do. And he was also constantly missing the Oblivion on the enemy target. That was a painful match to watch for Osaru. And once again, Masaru, I mean Masu, the master of Miles Rakuni in this bracket right here, dominating every single player with his combo. We are going for round two. Will he keep the Mount Rakuni? Because it works so well with the Praha and Lima that he would love to draft every single game. But I, I was very happy to see Osaru coming out of his comfort zone to draft something entirely different. Didn't really work out for him. But it was cool to see as well. The second round between these two players is about to get started, guys. Let's cheer for your favorite player in the chat. And this time, pre ban will probably be on Shizuka and potentially onto the Lima as well. Shizuka Oliver will be the two pre ban for this round. And first pick belong to Matsu, and I feel like he is going to steal the Karno away from Osaru. First pick for Matsu will be the Karno. Taking away the enemy favorite unit is a very viable strategy if you know exactly what they are doing. But also is going to go for a different style this game and he's going to pick up the segment and the Laura for his first two picks. One of them can strip reset, the other, them, the other one can strip into a heavy buff for the team. But that is perfect for Matsu because he's very, very lightly going to go for the Juno that will strip the entire buff that Laura can do for the team. But he's going to pick up a Nana here and go into the Bruiser playstyle that Osiru is very good at. And the answer to that is going to be a Belio for the heal and the Tetsaran to lock down the passive, the Nana and the Juno. But it's very non-win draft here, which means Masu can go for the Mouse and the Praha to bring in more healing and damage for his team. 
No, it's gonna be triple Oracle for Matsu. He's gonna be the Praha and the Lima getting picked up. Having the invincibility on the team, meaning the enemy Tessarian or Camilla or Abelio cannot do any real damage. So it might be a ban on both the Lima and the Laura here for these two players. Or maybe it's gonna be the Camilla ban. Because Camilla is really strong into Master Drive as well. Nope, it's going to be the Lima and the Segment ban, giving the enemy defense buff and speed buff, but because Masu know that, he can strip all that buff very, very easily. So maybe the one that's in danger right now is actually Ocelot. Here comes the first one, belongs to the Juno. That is a rather slower build, Laura, perfectly going after the two stripper from the side of Masu here. So will this Praha go for the strip? Because the Juno failed to strip the Laura. He's actually really, really slow, but that that is actually working in his favor by being a bit slow on the enemy because the stripper will now move first. And they can't strip the potential Laura speed and defense buff. And here comes the buff coming out from the Laura here perfectly for this moment. And there's nobody to strip that. And he's gonna violent for into a slow and a stun on the Prah as well. So right now, if he managed to take down the Juno, there'll be no strip coming out from Matsu in this turn. And the defense break Oblivion will land this time instead of last time that missed every single thing. The Camilla is gonna go straight into the Juno. No self cleanse from the Juno. And Juno will probably gonna go down very, very soon into the Camilla damage. Juno is gonna go down, losing her cool time as well. The Sun's gonna be moving after that. Just trying to finish off the Juno. Couldn't do that, but there are two units to finish the job. Here comes the counter trying to bring down the attack bar of the Laura, but that accidentally give the attack bar to the Abelio for a heal and the Nana to land that despair stun that she desperately need. Juno is going to cleanse the provoke healing by a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be enough unless the proc get a violent proc here. Masu is going to lose the Juno forever in this game. The Sun's going in with a big damage, could not finish it, but Camilla is going to cut in Perfectly right before the Praha knows and she can't heal up this Juno. She will heal the team and herself, but that's a little bit too late. And right now, the Laura is going to provide another round of strip and control. Here she go. Will she go for the strip and wake up the Praha? She will go for the strip and wake up the Praha because she believed that somebody's going to be there to stop the Praha. And that's going to be the Camilla stopping the Praha from stripping the entire enemy team for the Carno to lay down some damage. Carno getting the violent prop, but enemy is protected with defense buff and speed buff. So his damage and debuff would not be as strong, but she, he did get some control on the enemy team. The Camilla is going to get the violent prop to control the Praha once again. This Praha being heavily controlled every single turn is being very difficult for Matsu here. Even though the Carno is doing a lot of work and he is going to do a lot of damage on this Tessaran, but that's not going to be enough to take down the Tessaran to give the Nana the first kill. And that is not looking good because the Laura is constantly controlled every single turn. Even if the Carno can pro every single turn, it was not enough. And right now, if he touch anyone, a belly is going to gain a turn potentially. Big proc for the Laura. And this time, also, it's going to be the one on top with the RNG. And there's nothing much they can do. And we are going to the game three. Man, that was intense. As you can see, good RNG can favor any, any player. If last round, Masu can resist everything and proc out of everything, this round, also we can also do the same thing. That's why SWC can be anyone's game and anything can happen. Let's get ready for game three, guys. It's about to go down.
I wonder what Oscar is gonna do in this round of tech the win away from Matsu. And we are about to find out very, very soon here. This round pre band will be Carno and more. So no more no more Carno for Osiru ever in this round. But why is he pre banning more? Because I think Masu is all about that that article life. I think he should be pre banning something that the opponent actually use, right? But anyway, we have a Shizuka first pick into the Praha and the Juno first pick as always. And we might be seeing the Jamai Thessalian once again because we are definitely seeing the mouse coming back from the Masu draft. Here comes the Jamaya, but the sound really didn't work last time. Maybe he's gonna switch up the Laura or Sekhmet. No, it's gonna it's gonna stick with the Thessalian. He believed that you can't get that unlucky two games in a row. So the sound's gonna be chosen on the side of Osiru, and we might be seeing the Sagar potentially and Mouse or Rakuni coming out for Matsu here. Or he might stick with the Lima and Mouse for the big damage and a lot of buff. And that's gonna be the same pick in the very first game is also gonna go with the Ethna and the Demon. Demon is definitely gonna be a good pick, but I don't think Ethna is gonna be that good of a pick. And Laura is definitely not good because of the enemy able to strip your entire buff. But he's gonna go with the Ethna once again, even though it didn't really work out last game. Maybe it will this game. Who knows? He's really banging his head against brick wall, like how you call the King Key skill three. That is actually a real name, guys. I'm not making that up, okay? Look at the kinky passive. It is dead. And I think Osiru is really redoing the first draft here. And maybe Masu will do the same thing as well because it worked out so well for him earlier. Is he going to go with the Rakuni or is he going to go with something entirely different this time? He is going to switch up to the Sakma this time and he might change the band to the Jamaya because Jamaya do counter segment really, really well. It's going to be the segment and the Jamaya band. And this time there's one less fire unit for the Ethna to worry about. So maybe this time Ethna will be performing as expected. But he's letting the Lima stay. And without any cooldown reset, that Lima can get real, real nasty with the invincibility and cleanse. Here we go, guys. Big defense break coming out from the Ethna. Get it on everybody. But the first turn will be revenged by the Lima. And she can put up the invincibility and take away all the defense buff that Ethna was planning to utilize for the damage roll up coming out from the Thessalian and the Demon. But the problem is, Master Team is a bit faster than Osiru. So this setup might not be amazing into this Ethna. He's, she's going to be able to strip and stun the Pra. And she's going to go for it. But she doesn't get the stun on the Pra, which means Pra can sleep the Shizuka if she chooses to do so. Is the Pra going to go for the sleep? She will go for the sleep, but she will not get the sleep onto the Shizuka. And this Tessara can go for the Oblivion on the Pra just to leave the Oblivion on the field. But she he chose to go for the Mouse instead. Will the Shizuka drop the skill 3 knowing that there are 3 stripper waiting to strip all that? She's going to reduce the cooldown of the Ethna, allowing her to get her... Oh my god! The another despair stun this demon, even though he can do a lot of damage, but he's not getting a proper turn anytime soon. And the Ethna is being abused by the dance and the stun and the damage coming out from every single unit on the side of Masu. She will be the target because she brings so much damage and defense back to the table. Finally, this time, the Sun will be able to defense break and oblivion somebody. And that's going to be the Juno, the defense break, and the, the Oblivion landed, which means the, the Shizuka can stun the Juno, but the Lima is here to strip all that buff away, and she will take... Oh, but the Demon finally get a proper turn! He's going to get a Violent Prop and Skill 2 is available to go, but will he use it? He will use it to take away the Juno, but the Ethna will go down after he killed the unit, which means he cannot revive the Ethna in time. And it's not looking good. The demon is going to go down to the mouse as well because he used a skill too. Which means when the demon comes back to life, he's not going to be that scary. Everyone on the side of Osiru is now getting the slow debuff. Except for the sounds who got a violent proc to self-cleanse the slow debuff. But the Shizuka doesn't have any skill available. And there's no de more defense back setup with the Lima being able to provide the perfect invincibility in the cleanse. Working perfectly with the mouse damage. And the demon's gonna come back to no defense break and no ignore defense available for him. 
and he's not going to be able to do anything except for touching the mouse slightly. No violent performance as well, and he's going to go back down to the graveyard. And GG, Masu is going to take game three.